Hello, this is Tanya from Tanya Davis and Jewelry, and I thought I would do a Facebook Live, um, I guess, watch party um, on using rotary polishing and finishing tools. I had done, somebody had asked a question about their favorite sanding tools, so I had done a video and uploaded it to my online platform that's free. It's about nine minutes long, and I think there were about five pages of PDFs that go to it. Um, covering all the different kinds of sanding tools that I like to use and tools that I have purchased, used, but don't use anymore. And so if you'd like to check that out, that's available. I thought with the rotary um, tools, I would just do it live and answer any questions you might have. So I might look over on the iPad to see if anyone's asking questions, but I'll just start with the basics of the tools. Um, so you can start out with a Dremel or any inexpensive um, flex shaft. You don't need to have a nice one when you're first starting out. But as you grow and you get into things like stone setting, you're gonna wanna have more precise tools that um, you can see exactly how many RPMs you're using, or you can set it or limit it so it doesn't go past a certain RPM so that your tools are being used optimally and you're also uh, minimizing the chatter that you might get from drilling a hole or burning out a hole. And for that, I'm gonna cover that in a minute, you'll need a more expensive micromotor. And I wanna talk about some other micromotors, but for starting out, a really good investment, and I use these every day, is my SR uh, Fordham Flex Shaft. Um, this is a great tool to have. Uh, it comes with different hand pieces, as you can see with the insert that I've got there um, that shows the, um, the different hand pieces that you can select. The H30 is the most common and it often comes with the kits. So you can find different kits all over the internet or you can go like to Auto Fry and pick exactly which hand piece you want and then add hand pieces later um, with their sales or their discounts. Um, to start, you wanna have a foot pedal. I've never bothered getting a Lucas foot pedal but everyone raves about them. But I've had, I've found that the one that comes with it is just perfectly fine for me. When you're um, inserting or removing the hand pieces, you do turn it on a little bit and then stick it in so it can find that key latch and hook in. You don't wanna try to do that when it's not moving. <coughs> Excuse me, and get some coffee. Okay, so this is the little key that goes into your Fordham flex shaft. And I want to show you a little trick. So not every um, burr or bit that you have is a 3 32nd. Sometimes they're a 1 8th, so they're a little bit bigger. And that's okay. That's why you'll want to have an H30 handpiece because those fit in the H30, but they won't fit into the quick change ones that are made for 3 32nd. So what's really frustrating to me is when you're trying to get these in here, and you're trying to hold it straight like this and you're trying to get your key in there and, and it's wobbling around, always wants to move and then you try to get it in straight and inevitably you turn it on and it's wobbling. And that's going to affect the cut that you're gonna get. So let me show you a little trick that Kate Wolf showed me. So you stick this in and you hold it centered. You use your thumb here and this isn't gonna hurt you. You turn it on till it closes. Once it closes, all you have to do is give a one turn and you're done and ready to go. That's much faster than trying to brace it, center it, twist, 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 and then um, having to undo the, do the same thing to get it off. So that's a shortcut um, for using the H30 and making that quicker. So let me do that again for you. You just simply, and this will be available for you to watch later. And if you post your questions later, I'll be happy to answer them as well. So with this, basically it's just, you hold it centered with one hand, your thumb in the other, and then you turn it on to tighten it. And then you just give it a once turn and it's done, locked, ready to go. So this is the H30 and the SR hand piece. There's also these hand pieces that I really like. Um, this one is the uh, lever style, which is the faro or faro at the top. And then this one has like a little lever push button, um, which I believe is the H8, if I'm seeing that correctly. Or no, I, maybe I said those backwards. 
but this is one that I don't really like. It is a Fordham hand piece, and the reason I don't like it is sometimes when I'm using it, I accidentally push the lever in, and that can ruin the hand piece. So this one with the flip lever seems to me to be um, safer for me to use, so keep that in mind when you're picking a hand piece. I also don't like the spring um, sections that you can get in. It is ergonomically better for your arm and for your body because you don't have as much weight with the weight of the hose or the um, shaft hanging down, but uh, the springs tend to break and have to be replaced. I also want to show you something that I found out. I was having some problems with my hand pieces where um, the piece would not come out, the burr or the drill bit would not come out. So I contacted Fordham and they said, what you're supposed to be doing is when you push your lever in, you're supposed to push the piece in and then pull it out. So it's a, there's a mechanism inside. So if you ever have something that sticks, don't go grab your pliers or any tool and try to pull, pull if it's stuck. Simply push it in and then pull it out and it will release. Also with these quick change hand pieces, you're always supposed to leave a bit or burr in there or drill bit in there. So they come with these just pieces of um, metal that are cut and they don't have anything on the ends. Keep those around so that you can use that to store into your flex shaft or hand piece. Okay, so I've covered that. I do want to cover the next slide. Oops, wrong way. The next slide shows you the LX hand piece. I have one of these also because I have a hammer hand piece, which is the bottom one that you see, which is an H15. Um, the, I just bought the Fordham hand piece, hammer hand piece, and it works great. The thing about the Fordham hammer hand piece is that you have to use it at a slow speed. If you run it fast, it will ruin your hand piece. So Fordham will tell you that the warranty is only good if you use it with an LX motor. An LX motor has a higher torque and a lower speed. So the LX is really great for stone setting, for using your hammer hand piece to set stones, um, for those kinds of applications. So I do recommend the LX. If you're gonna buy a second flex shaft to buy an SR and then to have an LX available as well. Um, the thing about that I don't like about the um, hammer hand piece is the tips that come with it. I find the tips to be um, lower end or lower quality they need some modification. So you can modify those yourself with sandpaper and other sanding tools, but Bedeco, which also sells a hammer hand piece that you can upgrade to if you see it here on the slide, um, it, they have hammer hand pieces that they sell through AutoFright individually, and you can buy those singularly. And the small rectangle and the next size up from the smallest rectangle are really wonderful tools for bezel setting stones. So those are my go-to. I use them a lot um, and I highly recommend them. And I have taken my Fordham ones and I modified them for textures. So that's just another tip for you. Okay, so um, the next one that I wanted to show you is the Nakanishi um, Micromotor. This is for your next level up. So I started taking these great classes online from Gabriel Owen who owns Jewelry Institute. And he's one of our moderators here, and I highly recommend his online and in-person classes. He's in New Jersey, but you can also take the online classes as well. Um, he had recommended this handpiece and this micromotor. I have a marathon micromotor that I bought, and I thought, oh, I get away with a cheaper version. Well, the reason why you want one of these is because you can tell exactly what speed it's going. So if you want to drill your holes for your pave setting, and you want it to be under 4,000, you can set that dial to 4,000 and it won't go above it. So you can, it'll monitor it up to that and won't let you go faster than that. This is really important because there's, um, I couldn't figure out why I was having so much problems with my Marathon Micromotor. And it was because it just vibrates too much and it was chipping and chattering and, and messing up the holes. And then when I would go to cut the channels for Pave, I would, I would ruin my prongs and I was getting super frustrated. And I started blaming myself when in fact it was um, the equipment. The equipment just wasn't made for that. When I went back to the flex shaft, the flex shaft worked great for it, um, the LX, because the LX has more torque and less speed. However, making all those pave holes and channels is really difficult with 
with a flex shaft like this because of the weight in your hand and the um, shaft itself it presents more of a problem for being able to work for very long let me just put this on so i can put it down so i um invested in the nakanishi and uh when I first got into this, um, no one really was carrying this one that he recommends. So I went to Auto Fry because I work with them as a teacher and for my students, and I told them what I wanted because I ordered the wrong thing first and ended up keeping it. Most of the kits they sell and the kits that GRS sells and the other companies comes with the blue. The blue is not the high torque, it's the regular hand piece that allows you to go faster for polishing and drilling holes and that kind of thing. Um, so they sell an addition that you put in, you unscrew here and you add it into your hand piece. Well, the problem is it adds on more length. And when you're working under a microscope, it doesn't, your piece does not fit under a microscope. So now you've got to turn your vise sideways to drill your hole so you're not really seeing a bird's eye view of that hole. And I thought, well, this is ridiculous. And it's also more weight on the hand, which defeated the whole purpose of investing in this kind of money into a tool. So I went and talked to them and said, you know, I really wanted the one, the green button. And they said, well, let's put it together a kit. So what you see on the screen is the kit that I had them put together for me so I could refer uh, my students to and also that so Gabriel could refer his students to it. So this is the one that comes with the green um, torque type. It has the lever also here that releases your um, drill bit or burr and then that clicks down and you're ready to go. It has a foot pedal so I also had them put the foot pedal into the package and then down the road if you decide that you want to add the blue hand piece for polishing at higher speeds you would just order that hand piece separately and there's two ports in the front and there's an A and the B and it does go, these do work in forward and reverse. It's like the cat, it's like the Ferrari of uh, micro motors. And so you can plug both in and use both um, interchangeably with each other. So this is a nice thing for you to grow into if you're a new jeweler, if you're at that level where you're gonna start doing some fancy stone setting, then you probably do wanna invest in one of these. Um, like I said, they do run 10% off on occasion specials, um, or you can use my 7% off teacher code, which I will give you at the end of this. Um, and I think I've shared it. I'm just looking to see if there are any questions or comments and I don't see any yet. Um, so I'll just keep talking and showing you the stuff. Um, one of the things that you might want to get are these Japanese finger protectors. Um, people ask me how I can keep my nails looking so good. First of all, they're really short. They're super short. They look long, but they're not. Um, they're acrylic and gel for ladies who want to do this. Um, and they last me for at least two to three weeks. So, um, and they look good. So that's something that I'll just answer that question up front. But these Japanese finger cots are great for working when you're at the bench and you want to protect your fingers. So often when I'm holding a piece, if I don't want to ruin my manicure, I will use these. And they also protect your fingers from heat. So if I'm sanding on the Kate Wolf um, flat, uh, what's the word that I'm trying to find? It's the sander, the sanding belt that hooks up to your flex shaft. And I'm pointing it up, but you guys can't see it because my camera isn't there. But um, sometimes your piece will get really hot. So I wear these when I'm working and doing that to protect my fingers from the heat and also just from marks that might happen with a stray burr or bit. So I wanted to show you those. Um, let's see, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so let's talk about removing material. When I have a piece finished and maybe it had, I didn't actually form it the way I wanted to and I want to remove material, instead of getting in there with a saw blade or with a file and filing and filing, I just use these uh, tungsten carbide burrs. Now, AutoFry sells these, but AutoFry doesn't list the uh, grit, so you don't really know what you're using. And I only use fine and extra fine. So these are the different shapes that I use, which you'll see in the slides. Um, one I think is like the pineapple shape. There's a straight one. There's a very fine 
one straight one and then sort of a rounded one. I use these all the time to remove solder, to um, shape an edge, to put in marks in a piece, to replicate what looks like a um, upended edge with a hammer. So these are a lot of fun because you can do so many things with them. If you do the medium or the coarse, what usually happens is as you're using them, your hand, it will grab because it's a very, I wanna say vicious tool sometimes, where it, if you're not at the right speed and you're not braced up against your bench pin, like so, and you don't have your hands braced when you're using it, it can go off the edge because it's rolling and it will catch your finger and rip off your skin. So you do wanna use these carefully and this is why I only recommend the fine and the extra fine because the other grits are too coarse, they're grabbing too much and they will just spin right over. You won't have that problem with the fine and the extra fine um, as much, especially the fine. And I use these at like a 45 degree angle to my piece, down, down, down. So the, the pineapple, which is the one I'm showing you on the slide right now, is the one that I really love. Um, these are brand new. I don't have these yet, but I might invest in some. These are carbide inside cylinder burrs, which are really nice for the rings. So if you want to um, get in and remove some material on a ring to make it a bigger size or in an area that you need to remove material, these might be your go-to save you in a project burr. Um, this is the small rounded one. I really like this because I can get down into divots. Um, I can also get around the corners of things and make a nice rounded shape on an edge to give a decorative edge. This is the one that I like to use the most. This is a fine. I can get down into corners and grooves. Have I have too much solder somewhere? I can, this is a great tool for removing solder. A re, worth every penny to have this one. Okay, so I'll put these back. And I'm gonna look and see if anybody has any questions so far. And this is, you probably can't see it, but what, this is also a Fordham tool. Sid Rowley in our group and Wayne Werner in our group, both are distributors of Fordham Flex Chef things if you wanna check them out. Or you can get them on Auto Fry with it, my teacher discount as well. But this is a really nice thing to have for your bench. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is texturing. If you wanted to texture your piece, these look scary and they can be scary, so you want to be careful with them. But these are miniature texturing wheels. And you can replace these if you mess them up. But basically when you're using these, you want to use them no faster than 6,000 RPM and you're just touching down the piece. So I'm really being very careful and I'm just touching it, touching it, touching it. I'm not pushing down, not applying pressure because when you do that, that's when they fly. You wanna make sure you're wearing safety equipment. Wear a mask, wear eye goggles, whatever you need to do to protect yourself because if you do push down on this or it catches an edge and it breaks off, it's going to fly somewhere. So this is a great tool for adding texture. I use these a lot on the backs of my pieces um, or in areas that I wanna add a texture and I store them in the, in the containers they come in um, and I only have the red and the blue. So these are the ones that I use the most and uh, love having them. Okay, so then the next thing, if you need to remove solder, this is also a great tool. It's an inverted cone carbide burr um, this will make it easy for you to be, see how it's got teeth on the ends. So you're using it upside down, not so much sideways. Um, and you can use it sideways to go in and, and remove material. But often I will just use my little fine pointy one for removing the solder. So I wanted to show you that as another tool to remove solder if you needed to do that. And sometimes we do. Sometimes. Um, we're stick soldering and the solder melts where we don't want it or globs off and falls. Sometimes we use too much solder. Sometimes we don't use enough and then we go back in it, the metal's already warm and where we are hot and where we put it, it melts right away instead of going in that area. So these things are inevitable and um, having the right tool to remove it makes your life so much easier. Okay, these are fantastic. There's two sets, I'm gonna show you that one and the white one. I don't really know 
the big difference between the two, so I just bought both sets. Um, I really love these. I don't use the bigger ones so much as the tiny ones for removing solder, for removing metal in areas that I can't get down in there with my carbide tungsten um, burrs that I showed you earlier, which were these. So if I can't use those, I can't get down in them, then I will use these grinding point sets. And they're not expensive for the whole set, so you might as well get them. They last a really long time. And um, something I didn't show you, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so those I highly recommend also. And so just so you can kind of see how tiny they are, I'll get some of them here for you. The white ones seem to be tinier. So if I was gonna buy a set and I couldn't buy both or didn't wanna buy both, buy the white set. But you can see these um, small, maybe I can zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so you can see how they are in relationship to the carb tungsten carbide ones that I was recommending earlier. They're about the same size. And that's really nice because they can get down in those nitty gritty areas. Okay, so that's another suggestion or recommendation for polishing sanding. And having had a jewelry tool and supply company for 10 years as the owner, I felt like I couldn't carry something that I couldn't stand behind and recommend and hadn't tried. I mean, I don't know how many dealers are out there that they just carry whatever and they don't even know if it works they don't even know if it's a good tool they don't even know what you use it for that if you ask them they probably wouldn't even be able to tell you i wanted to try everything which meant that i had to invest in getting one and then trying it out so i feel like i'm sort of a tool i don't want to say expert because you can always learn a lot from other people and you'll continue to learn your whole life but I do know a lot about tools just because I've invested in so much trying to learn so I could share it with my customers and clients. So that's the only reason why I feel like I could share this with you and, and be able to um, stand behind each of these products. Okay, let's see, I'm just looking at the, the notes. Um, yes, so Janessa Marie said, um, sometimes I have a hard time getting rid of fire scale in a bezel setting with a clear stone. Yeah, um, these tools will really help because fire scale, fire stain is below the surface. So that means you really, really have to sand a lot to get rid of that. But fire scale, you should be able to pickle off or sand off. And I'm gonna get to the sanding tools in just a minute. These were, I'm going over first, the really when you wanna remove a lot of material. You need to get stuff off of a piece. Um, or you want to change the shape of a piece without having to saw or file, file, file forever. Because again, we can make the most money when we're efficient. And if we can use our tools um, to the best efficiency, then we make more money. So for me, spending $5 or $20 on a tool that will save me 15, 20 minutes, if I'm trying to make money, our biggest expense is always going to be our labor. And most of your tools you can turn around and sell. So for tomorrow, for example, tomorrow if I wanted to sell my Nakanishi, I could probably sell it for 95% of what I paid for it. And that means that great, I was renting it for a couple hundred bucks for a couple years or whatever, however long I kept it. To me, if your tools hold value, you're just really renting them from yourself for a while. Yes, you do have to pay to buy them but they're not losing their value. Now, the, the grinding stones and things like that, yes, they're replaceables or consumables, so you, you have to be careful how many polishing points you buy. So that's why I wanted to kind of show you things that you can pick and choose from that would be better than getting something that you didn't know about and that you could try out. So yes, um, those are um, definitely, these tools will help you remove fire scale or fire stain, um, and they will help make your life a lot easier. Okay, so the next tool I wanted to show you. So um, if you are doing any engraving, um, these are great tools. This is an Eve, uh, it's a diamond um, rubber or silicone wheel, and they come in different sizes. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you can get them cheaper someplace else and you don't look at the size. So this is the yellow one also. And when I bought it, I bought this set and I thought, oh, well, they're cheaper, so I'm gonna buy those. And then ended up seeing how small they are. And it's really hard to get in there. And I don't really have, let's see, a burr available. But if you're trying to, for example, 
this was a, an engrave, a graver, um, it would be really hard for me to do it on the tiny wheel, but I did make do with this for a long time before I decided to buy a new one in the bigger size. And these are great for shaping points. So if you wanna modify a broken burr or drill bit, or you need to polish and shape up your gravers, these are must have. Um, highly, highly recommend them. Now, if you have a lot of modification to do, to a tool don't waste your diamond expensive ones these are i'll show you in the next screen i was going to cover them in a minute they're 44 dollars a piece so they're not inexpensive um, and you really only need the yellow one don't bother getting i hardly ever use the blue and the green so what i've learned from different instructors gabe owens for sure from Jewelry Institute, is that these inexpensive ones from eBay, these um, diamond wheels, they're centered diamonds on both sides. These are great for doing modification and shaping of um, various tools, your gravers, your broken drill bits, um, even sharpening up a drill bit instead of tossing and buying a new one, or your burr, same thing, um, your, um, your setting burrs, your heart burrs. If you want to, you can polish the, you can sharpen those up. I'm not quite good enough at seeing those lines to be able to do that, but you can. You can get good at it, and you can learn how to do that. And, and Gabe teaches you how to do that. But these are great for that, and they're inexpensive. The, they are a lot more expensive at Rio and Otter Fry. So just go to eBay and get yourself a set. This is what this one is. Um, but also, I use this for rings. So when I come to, to, when I overlap my ring band and I saw through it, inevitably it's not a flush matchup every single time. Most of the time it is if you do it that way. Sometimes the material that you're using, you don't have the ability to overlap it, to saw through it, and to connect those two edges together. Sometimes you have a material where it's just going to butt up and you're going to try to sand that. And I don't know about you, but when you open it and you try to file or sand it flat, if your stroke is off at all, you're gonna round those edges on the two ends. And then you put it together and you look at it through the light and you still have a gap somewhere or it's not quite perfect. I will often use this tool. I'll open it up just enough to stick it in and I'll get perfectly flush edges on both sides of that ring band. So it saves me a lot of time. And it's so thin and, um, skinny there that it will fit in between those two much better than a more disc. I've seen a lot of teachers show these more sanding discs which I also use but not for this application because these are not always perfectly straight or flat and they're actually thicker than this. So this is a great option to have around for any of those kinds of tasks or jobs that you might have. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. So that was this that I've already talked about, the Jura Swish Sara Gloss. So it's got the diamond polishing wheel in it. These are great. I don't use them for polishing my metal though. This That's not what it's for, not for what I use it for anyway. I use this for sharpening and modifying and polishing tools, especially gravers. Okay. So let's talk about the concave burr kits. Um, I just showed you the kit because it's nice to have, but I wanted to just show this tool to you because the standard ones are just full cut, full cups, and they work fine. But these twin cut cave, concave burrs are perfect for, say like you have a prong that you need to round up, these work really well to round up the prongs. Uh, I learned this from Blaine Lewis. There is a video on Rio Grande where he demonstrates it, so you might wanna look at that. Also, if you have a um, project where you've got, you balled up wire, not every time are you gonna get those balls perfect on the end of that wire from balling it up. What One thing that does help is using Argentium. It's the easiest thing to get perfect balls when you ball it up in a flame. So get some argentium wire and keep that on hand for any time you need to ball up your wire. But so for example, if you had a ball on one end and then you had the wire and you were putting it through a tubing and then you were making some kind of catch or hanger, um, argentium. But say like you don't get it perfect or say you've got two of them and they don't match. Drew, would you hand me my piece that has the horse hair over there? So say like you have two of them on a project 
it's unlikely you're going to get those two balls in the torch exactly the same. So you can cheat by using the burr cup. So I don't know if you can see my project I'm working on. This is a pendant that will hang down that has horse hair. Um, here we go. So I have these two balls that I rounded up with the torch and then I put it through the tubing and I had flattened it out and drilled a hole so I'm going to connect my um, chain to that hole. But these balls possibly couldn't, might not have been the same shape or the same size. So I can take a um, cup and go in and burr that and remove material so they're exactly the same size and it'll keep the round shape. So these concave cup burrs are meant to round the wire and to remove material but making it perfectly circular. So if you're in that job like me and you need all your balls to be perfectly round, this is your tool, okay? So that's a good tool to have in your toolbox. All right, uh, next tool. Okay, these are amazing, I love these. These are roll sanders, they're from Autofry. I think Rio probably carries them, but they come in, um, the sizes are 220, 320, 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. Let's see, make sure I'm in the camera there. So these are fantastic. I love them, you can rip it off, you can rip some off when, you're done, when you get, you've used too much of it, but they're color coded. I don't know if you can see the bottoms, you can in the image in the slide. Um, and I actually will write on them with a Sharpie marker. These are amazing. I hardly ever use my sanding boards anymore, honestly, because I just love using these. They're fantastic for ring shanks. Uh, really a great tool and I highly recommend them. So I would pick those up in a heartbeat today. And you can get an assortment like this where it's all 12 in an assortment, or you can get, um, just if you just wanna buy the 220s or the 400s, you can order just a pack of those as well. Okay, the more sanding discs. So that's these, and they come in fine, medium, coarse, and extra fine. Uh, they're plastic back, so they come on these snap heads that work from compressing the two sides, and then uh, some, and my fingers are usually so weak that I used to have to use um, a set of pliers to get, so if you are like me, and your fingers sometimes don't work, you can get the pliers to pull the heads off. Well, why am I having so much problems? Okay, let's, isn't that when you're always demoing, things go crazy. So they snap off. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little square and they snap on. So what I'll do is one side is plastic like that. They just snap on easily. One side is plastic and one side has the abrasive on it. So I'll write like coarse on the outside with a Sharpie marker and I'll have two courses, one with it, the abrasive facing up and one with the abrasive facing down. So if I'm working on a piece where I want to get in and sand the inner edge of something, I can come in with the Moore's disc here. If I want to sand the outside, then I come in and use this Moore disc. So that's nice that they're really interchangeable. The one thing I love them for is I have a couple different ones. This is emery sandpaper and then this is the Moore discs that are on the plastic. And you, there's a whole variety of them. They actually come like this too, where they have cuddle bone, um, emery, garnet, um, sandpaper, and then they have the plastic ones. So you can buy a variety, and this container is just from the dollar store, Dollar Tree or something that I keep them in, and I keep them in my drawer next to me. So this will give you a whole range. You can buy this as a set from, I think, Rio. And they come with the small and the 5 8 inch and the 3 4 inch. So you'll have a variety of sizes to use for different projects. Um, as you can tell, I've had this for a number of years and haven't gone through hardly any of them. And then I bought the plastic ones because I really do prefer the plastic ones. But what I wanted to show you here is that I took the screw top mandrels and I put two of them back to back. And I used the coarse, so the coarse sandpaper and the coarse plastic. And when I want to... Um, pull down wire draw through a draw plate uh, or tubing or any of those kinds of things or if I'm working on a piece that has tapered wire I do a lot of stuff with tapered wire uh, I can step it down in the rolling mill to get it started but sometimes you need to have that point and you definitely need to have the point to pull wire through a draw plate so the old way is to sit and sand it and put your wire like in in a pin vise 
and file, 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 file till it's a tapered point. But this is how you cheat. And I'm all about cheating um, if I can because it saves me time and it saves me effort and energy. So I'll put this in here. And this one's actually, that's a one eighth. That's why I wouldn't fit in my quick change. It's a one eighth. So that one I would have to use my H30 hand piece. So this one goes in my quick change. And what I do is I stick the wire in between the two pieces of sandpaper that face each other and turn it on and keep doing that. And it will sand it right into a perfect point, a very sharp. So you could use this for pin backs, um, for modification through draw plate, or if you just want tapered wire for your design, maybe you're doing a spiral and you want it to start out fat and go to skinny, These, um, this tool is amazing. So again, it's just taking two of the more discs, facing them towards each other and using a screw top um, mandrel instead of the, the ones that come with it, the snap top. And these are fantastic. It will cut your time down for sanding any of those things. And I just keep this on my bench like so in the back and I have coarse, medium, and fine of those. Okay, I don't, I don't see any more comments. Just check in the comments here. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you, um, those are the square um, mandrels that you're gonna need and that's a three pack. So you'll need those for your more discs. So if you have two for each one, you're gonna need six, so I'd get two packs. Okay, so these, um, I learned about these at uh, New Approach, which is Blaine Lewis's school. Uh, these are actually, um, if you're looking at other sources like Staller or even I think Rio carries these, these are um, in, Indenta, Swiss Top Star. Those are the three words you're gonna be looking for because one company calls them Swiss Top Star, the other one calls them Indenta, the other one calls them uh, platinum polishers or something, but this is what you're looking for. These are amazing. They sell the brown and the green. The brown is a pre-polisher, the green is a polisher. This is what I use in all of my stone settings. So when I'm finished, I do the brown and then I do the green and pretty much that's it's done. You don't even have to, it, that'll give you a super high shine, beautiful finish. Be careful, these pre-polish will take away metal so you don't use them very, you know, you want to be really paying attention to how much metal you're taking off and go slowly with these just because you don't want to take off too much metal and there you go, there's your stone setting is gone and you're going to have to start over. So these are what really great and then also the green ones are fantastic. Another, if I don't use those, I'll reach for my Shofu, which I didn't take a picture of for the slideshow, but they look very similar. There's um, the blue and the brown. It's like a greeny, it's called a greeny Shofu, but to me it looks kind of like turquoise. It's not really as green as this green. You can see the difference. So these work really nicely as well, this um, Shofu. So I'll just leave those out there. Oops, okay. So two great polishers to have. So I have tried all of them, all the Advantage Edge, all of the other kinds. The I have a multitude, I mean a whole rack of these rubber and silicone wheels I have tried. These are two are the absolute best, along with the Shofu. Okay, so if you have a little tiny teeny area that you need to get into, these are fabulous for that. So I have them in all sorts of colors and sizes. So they come in, the, the two millimeter and the one millimeter. And on top of that, sometimes, you know, they come in their square like this. You can see in the picture, they're just like a, um, a cylinder, but you need to shape them. These are little shaping um, tools that you can buy. You can also use your inexpensive diamond cutoff disc that I showed you earlier, or you can use something like this. And What's so great about being able to shape them is that you can actually come in at an angle and shape them, or say like you're wanting to polish a channel setting. So you've got that wall of metal and you need to polish inside on this side and polish on this side. You can actually come in and make a groove at an angle on each of these, like so, and that will give you a groove inside of this that fits down over your piece. So don't be afraid of taking these different polishing points 
and using materials to modify them into shapes. This is just a starting shape. They are meant to be modified. So these are two things that you really want to have around to modify your tools. I have purchased other things, like I have purchased the diamond one that's on a handle with a rectangle. It didn't last hardly at all and it was expensive. I don't recommend those. Um, these are nice, these little blue squares. They also make a yellow, a white one. I don't think it's in my bench. Nope. Um, I have a rolling cart next to my bench that has I'm big on rolling carts. I have lots of rolling carts for modification of tools. But anyway, you can find um, any kind of tool like that to modify what you need um, to be able to make them into the right shape. Okay, so those are your polishing pins and you will need to get the holders. So this kit right here comes with the holders, but you can buy them individually. They're called polishing rod mandrels and they're meant to fit into your quick change handpiece as well. Okay, so we all know about, or we most all of us know about the radial discs, and I use the 3M ones, but there are different brands now that make them. Um, you want to use three to six of them on a mandrel at a time. So this one ha these have six on them. Don't use them singularly. They're not made to work that way. So you want to make sure whatever kit you have that you're going to have three to six to use on each mandrel. And these are the screw top mandrels. They Be careful because they do sell them with the 1 8 inch and those will not fit in your quick change hand pieces. You wanna make sure that you're getting them with 3 32nd. Um, also, um, let me just tell you about the uh, grit. So it doesn't look to me like Auto Fry carries the yellow, but the yellow is an 80 grit. And it's, um, sometimes I'll use that if, it doesn't seem like this grit that's on here is the same as a sandpaper grit. Like if I took sandpaper 80 and went at my piece, it would be very different than going at it with these. These seem to be less ab aggressive as sandpaper. So keep in mind, sometimes you might need an 80 when you don't think you would. Um, especially if you're getting down in grooves and removing something. I do a lot of reticulated silver um, granulation. I wouldn't use these on granules because they'll just make your round balls go flat or into another odd shape very quickly. But sometimes I need to start with a yellow and then, some, then I'll move to the white and then you've got your red which is your 220 and then your blue, which is your 320. And those are the ones you're gonna use the most of. So I would get extras of those. And then you've got your pink and your peach and your green. And the pink, peach, and green, um, these are ones that I also use to remove patina. So sometimes I will patina something and I need to remove the patina from the high areas or I wanna remove a lot of the patina and just have very little patina down in the cracks. I will usually start with the peach or the green. Um, the green is really nice for an after finish. So get some extra of the green. And I also keep, I don't know why, but I feel better keeping the green one with the patina on it separate. So sometimes I'll have two green ones, one for patina and one with not. And if you're gonna ever mark them, mark them up here with nail polish. So if you wanted to mark this one as your one with patina, mark it up here. Don't ever coat this because when you try to stick it in here, it adds a layer of width to it and it doesn't fit into your hand piece very well ask me how i know and then also because i thought i was going to be so smart and color code my stuff that didn't work out so well also you're getting that into your flex shaft and that's not good either so word of warning okay see if there's any other yeah the 3m radial disc and used to be my favorite i don't really use them as much anymore um because i found other things that work better but you have to have the 3M radial discs if you're doing a lot of texture pieces. So all of my reticulated silver pieces, my um, granulated pieces, I'm using those 3M radial discs to polish them up because they're the only things that will get down into the grooves and everything else is pretty much a flat polish. So if I'm polishing up a, a bezel rim or the back of something, then I use those brown and green pre-polish and polish um, rubber and silicone burrs, but um, and bits, but I don't. Um, for those things, you can't use those on texture. You're not going to be able to get down in the grooves of the texture. So that's a very good point. Okay, let's talk about what do you do when you have a piece that you need. You have crevices and you have 
things that you really don't want to remove a lot of metal. So for example, granulation, you have, you don't want to ruin those perfectly round spheres that you have now fused to the surface of your piece. And maybe you fused it onto reticulated silver. So now you have even more texture and grooves. How do you polish that up? So I tend to like to use um, these, let me just take these out here. Okay, so I will get little baggies and I'll put like, this is Zam and this is my step six. And then I'll even label them with steps. And this is my, my Picasso bag, which should be a five, not a six. But anyway, um, they're two. So I use, sometimes I'll use Zam and usually I use Picasso blue as my final step. But the things that I like to use inside of the bag are the little um, hair wheels. I'm gonna show that in another slide. Um, this one has a chamois or muslin in between, which will hold the compound better, uh, or a felt wheel, or a felt hard point if I need to really get in there and polish it up. And um, what I will also use as my carrier is mineral oil. And I have these little containers and I'll put mineral oil inside of the container and then I'll keep this inside the bag with the number five. The thing about polishing compounds is you don't want to cross contaminate your polishing compounds. You don't want to use like the wheel with a uh, green and then use it with the red and then use it with the Picasso because those polishing compounds or grits are still in that felt and will contaminate each one each step that you do so you have to keep everything separate your bigger wheels you keep separate your smaller wheels you keep separate you keep them labeled and I keep everything in baggies sometimes they're the bigger baggies that have the actual wheel in it and the the Luxie or whatever compound I'm using and then I try to keep all of that together so nothing gets cross-contaminated the other thing about polishing compounds is I found it very confusing. People were like, use, use Tripoli, use Graystar, whatever. But then you go and you look and there's like all these different kinds and names and it gets very confusing, but people know what they've used. And sometimes you meet a jeweler who's been in the business for 40, 50 years and they're used to using Tripoli and Graystar. Now, some of the newer ones don't have the silica, silica in it, so they're better for you. Like the Luxie brand is, I believe, a water-based so you don't have to use like simple green to remove it. Now the Picasso is harder to remove. So I either have to use my ultrasonic fluid or I have to use simple green to get it to come off. Um, and so it's a little bit more work, but you do have to make sure that you clean in between each step and you put all your stuff away, clean your hands, clean your piece, and then go back and use the next compound. But if I'm working with my flex shaft and I've got these little itty bitty ends in there I can put it in the silica the mineral oil onto my Zam and then onto my piece and it will polish in all those little bitty areas very nicely without damaging the sphere or the texture or the shape and I've kind of shown you that I use the yellow if I really need to remove a lot then the green then the red Luxie and then I'll either do the blue Picasso or the Zam so when you buy your ends, it's okay if you buy a set of six of these because you're probably gonna need one for each of the compounds. So don't think you're just gonna need one and be able to use it for each one. This is the blue Picasso and it says platinum, but I use it on gold, silver, and platinum and it is amazing. And I even took my bandsaw and cut it in half and I have this one in the baggie for all my Ford and Flex shaft pieces and I have the other half for my Baldor polisher that I use it with. So this is a really great um, polishing compound. These are some of the bristle cups. So you might want one that's a bristle cup. You might want one that's on a wheel that has the muslin or chamois center. And then um, these often come already mounted. I like the ones that are pre-mounted, but if you want to save a little money, you could just get the screw tops, but then you take the chance of the screw top hitting your piece and putting another scratch and then you have to start over. So it's some plus and minuses of saving money on those. These are amazing. I love these, the Stoddard brand of miniature felt buffs. Um, they work exceptionally well for polishing with compounds. Let me see if I can dig one out of the bag here. That's what my Picasso one looks like. 
um, and you're just going to do it the same way you do not with the with the felt you do not need any mineral oil only with the hair bristles do you use the mineral oil um, this you just put it right into the compound when your um, flex shaft is on and charge it as they say and then use it on your piece and then make sure you do clean it clean your hands put your stuff away before you move on to the next compound okay these are a lifesaver uh, these are called Gem Shine Polishing Wheels, and I learned about these from Blaine Lewis also at New Approach School, which is amazing for stone setting. Um, if you're done stone setting or setting a piece, like this is a color changing garnet um, in the top, sometimes you might get a tiny scratch on there if it's a softer stone. Or um, so, spinel, I was setting a spinel and I had a little scratch on there or just like a little r mark from the metal that had transferred onto the stone these will save your hiney these gem shine polishing wheels come in a pack of five and you use them to polish up it has polishing compound already built in and some kind of liquid in there um, or, or oil and as you use them it polishes the stone so it will save you from having to send your stones back to a stone cutter or taking the stone out and putting a new one in it won't get out really deep scratches but surface imperfections it will help you with your piece. So I highly recommend you have some of those on hand. Okay, the next thing is um, when you're done polishing and you want to just highlight the edges and burnish up certain areas to give it even more detail and depth in the piece, I always go polish, burnish around the edges of my piece, the sides, the little tiny areas, all of the balls, I will hit the tops with the burnisher to give it that sparkle. Um, also, sometimes it's something I'll use around a stone setting, especially if it's bezel set. But these are my favorites. So I will use the one on the left, the second one from the left, and the third one from the left. I do own this one, which I hate, and they're expensive. So this one tends to put in more scratches than anything else. The third one from the left is my favorite. The uh, pointy one and for some reason mine will not fit in the quick change it only fits in my h30 hand piece so I accidentally left it in Tucson and I don't have it here so I'm going to buy a new one and hopefully it will fit in the quick change and it should and I think it was just a miss um, miss manufacture that it didn't fit but these are worth every penny I use them in sort of this motion to polish up all the edges as a very last step in my flex shaft. And what's happening is it's carbide and it's hard and it's spinning and it puts in the most beautiful diamond polish edge that you've ever seen. So I highly recommend these as a detail. So these are some things that I wanted to share with you that are really great for um, working at your bench. I'm just trying to see if there's anything that I forgot to share with you. Oh, I do like these also, and I didn't take a picture because I forgot about them, but these are, um, uh, the word just left my head, but they're like scrubby pads. I think they're made by three, oh, Scotch-Brite, Scotch-Brite, that's what they're called, Scotch-Brite. Um, they come in coarse, medium, and fine. These will leave a beautiful texture in your piece. Uh, if you're familiar with Harold O'Connor's work, who is one of my mentors, I've taken a whole bunch of classes from him. Um, he uses these exclusively on his pieces. So he doesn't tumble them, he doesn't magnet finish them, he doesn't sand them or anything because every, all of his stuff is reticulated silver with granulation on it. Um, and he uses these solely for polishing before he patinas. So these are capable of giving you a beautiful finish. Um, they do wear out pretty quickly and you wanna wear a mask or have a vacuum going because the particles go everywhere and you definitely don't wanna be breathing any of this stuff. And speaking of which, um, talking about safety, is I highly recommend you have a vacuum collection system, a dust collection system when you're doing all this polishing. I really like the Fordham Fish Mouth that connects directly to your vacuum. Um, here in Montana, I have a jewel tool vacuum. In Tucson, I invested in a Fordham dust collector, which I love hands down the best that I've had. I've tried other ones too at shops when I've taken classes. And I really love the Fordham because it can hook up to my Kate Wolf belt sander as well. And if a piece, if it sucks in a piece, I can get it out because there's a second retainer uh, capture that allows you to get pieces back so bigger uh, bigger pieces of metal or um, shavings or filings and then the rest goes in and you can send that off to the refiner when you send in your stuff 
But the fish mouth has two, I have it back there, but it has two hand rests that allow you to be very comfortable for long hours of polishing because I like to do everything in kind of stages. So I'll work on all of my pieces with soldering and I'll work on all my pieces for finishing because it just seems more efficient than having to work through each step on a piece and then start over on another piece. So if you can do that assembly style, it's, it is more efficient. Um, but that fish mouth polishing thing is fantastic. I highly recommend it. And to take care of yourself, you know, you want to wear a mask and an N95 mask because you don't want the silicone stuff or the silica or any of the sandpaper things to go into your lungs. And steel, especially steel dust, is also really bad for you. And we forget about that, that some of our tools have that um, in it as a burr or whatever. And you just don't know what you're breathing. So you do want to be careful about those things. Okay, so I think that's it. I, will, I don't see any other, other questions that anybody has sent me. Um, or posted, but if you have any questions later, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, anything I showed or didn't show, or if you want to ask me about a tool that you have or you're thinking about buying, uh, I'd be happy to answer it. And if you want to buy any of these things from Auto Fry, you can use the code T O D A V D T uh, for seven percent off of anything you buy from Auto Fry. And as part of being one of my students in this free class, uh, I hope that's helpful. And um, if you want to see the other videos, go to tanyadavidson.com to the online learning tab. And every, there are over nine videos there um, and with over 40 pages of PDFs of handouts that I give you materials, things that I used, tell you where to get them, everything, even the, the number of what to order. So if you have any questions on those things, let me know as well. All right, thank you so much. You guys have a great day. Do I hit the stop recording? Thank you.